What's going on with those flickering ghosts in Pac-Man? Not the beloved arcade original, but the less than beloved, done in a great hurry for a quick cash in 1982 Atari 2600 game. It's tough to believe now, but this was the biggest selling game on the Atari 2600, and in fact at one point it was the biggest selling game in the world. Atari sold 7 million copies of it, which should have meant it was a big success, but unfortunately they had 12 million copies manufactured, leaving them with a few left over that they didn't really know what to do with. The excess cartridges apparently ended up being buried in that famous desert landfill alongside copies of that other Atari balls up E.T. If you've ever played this version of the game you'll probably agree that a hole in the ground is the best place for it. It doesn't bear that much resemblance to the arcade original, the graphics are ugly, the sounds irritating, the gameplay is clunky and the icing on the fairly pooey cake that is this game are the ice strain inducing flickery ghosts that Pac-Man is faced with. Take a look at it, however you play this game whether it's on the real hardware or on an emulator it just doesn't look that good. Why are these ghosts so very flickery? Well thereby hangs a tale. Maybe not a very interesting one, but one you're going to hear if you carry on watching this video. To understand what's going on we're going to have to learn a bit about how graphics work on the Atari 2600. Now the system certainly did have its quirks, but the basic principle of the graphics are pretty similar to a lot of other machines from that era. I'm simplifying things a bit here, but the graphics are made up of two elements. First off we have the background, or playfield as it was often called with the Atari. This is fairly self-explanatory, it's the fixed or sometimes scrolling backdrop where the game happens. In Pac-Man, this is of course the maze. Then we have the sprites, these are the elements of the graphics that move relative to each other and relative to the background. These are players, enemies, bonus items, what have you. In Pac-Man of course, this is Pac-Man himself and the ghosts. The Atari 2600 hardware can handle five sprites. It can have five moving objects on the screen at any given time. That might sound like plenty. Five sprites, one Pac-Man, four ghosts. But unfortunately, not all these sprites were created equal. Only two of these sprites, the player sprites, capable of handling the kind of, I say detailed, but relatively detailed graphics you'd need to draw Pac-Man or a ghost. The other three sprites, the missile sprites and the ball sprite, can only draw images made up from unbroken lines of fixed length. So this left the programmer with a bit of a problem. How do you make two sprites equal one Pac-Man and four ghosts? Well, there's only one thing you can do. You've got to cheat. To show you what's going on, I've slowed the game right down so you can see each frame of animation individually. You'll notice that there's only ever two sprites on the screen at any given time. Whilst Pac-Man appears in every single frame, the ghosts have to take it in turns. Each individual ghost only appears every fourth frame, hence the flicker, they're only being drawn a quarter of the time. Whilst Pac-Man gets the full 30 frames per second to himself, each individual ghost is stuck with just 7.5 frames per second each. And when you've only got two sprites to play with, what else are you going to do? You're going to swap between them as quickly as possible and hope that it kind of sort of looks okay. Now that should be the end of this story, but I'm sure some of you are thinking, what about Ms. Pac-Man? That's a very similar game on the same console, came out not long after. That's not nearly so flickery, it looks a lot better. And that's true, Ms. Pac-Man was a better game in pretty much every way. It was made with a bit less coke fueled executive hubris and a bit more programming skill. And the flicker, well it's still there, but it's not nearly so bad. So what is it that Ms. Pac-Man does differently from the original? Well it turns out that this two sprite limit doesn't necessarily apply to the whole frame of animation. With a bit of clever programming, it only applies to each individual scan line. What's a scan line? Well it's one of the horizontal rows of pixels across the screen that make up the image. To show you what I'm talking about, I've exaggerated the scan lines a bit with an emulator and blown it up so you can see them in detail. Whilst each one of these scan lines can't have a portion of any more than two sprites on it, you can have more sprites than that in the image as a whole. How do you do that? Well, you can take advantage of the fact that the image isn't drawn instantly. The analog video output of the Atari 2600 builds up the image scan line by scan line, and although it's too fast for the human eye to see, it is possible to change the image as it's being drawn. You start out by letting the Atari draw the first two sprites as normal. Then, after the first two sprites have been drawn, but before the rest of the image has a chance to be sent to the TV, you very quickly swap those two sprites for two others in the Atari's video memory. This allows two extra sprites to be drawn somewhere else a bit further down the screen. This process can then be repeated, giving you even more sprites. In fact, you can go on repeating this process until you run out of screen. Of course, I'm simplifying this process quite a lot. The code behind this is hugely complex, but if you do it right, you can give yourself a lot more sprites. Two sprites per scan line is still pretty limiting though. You can't have more than two moving objects on the same horizontal plane. If the game demands that, well, you've got to fall back on the old flickering technique used in the original Pac-Man. And this is exactly what Ms. Pac-Man does. 
When possible, it'll use the redrawing technique to give us those flicker-free sprites. But when too many ghosts want to line up, well, it'll start making them take turns to be drawn. And it's only in a worst case scenario, when all the sprites line up on the same scan line, will it flicker as much as the original Pac-Man did. We shouldn't be too hard on the coder of the original Pac-Man. Pulling this off requires a lot of very intricate programming and precise timing. Something that requires a lot of time and resources to pull off, which he didn't have by all accounts. These techniques that make a limited number of sprites go further are called sprite multiplexing. And it's not just limited to the Atari 2600. It was used on a lot of machines in this era, and even into the 16-bit era. If you're playing any classic game and you start to see things getting a bit flickery, there's a good chance it's sprite multiplexing that you're seeing, and the programmers were using some clever techniques to get a bit more out of the machine. If you enjoyed this video, have a think about subscribing. And if you didn't, well, <laughs> I don't suppose there's much I can do about that.